in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice it takes love for God to appear before him every now and then and I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ before I go on with the teaching tonight I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution i like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture god has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of god the book of colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not um, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with God. This is more than that. Praise the Lord. It's important that we, we understand that this is not just a ministry. This is not just a church. This is a move of God. And that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture. That which God is doing upon the surface of the earth. When you realize this, you will come with every sense of seriousness. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations. It's important that whenever you come for koinonia, generally speaking, whenever you go to any ministry, any church, um, take time to study the operation of God in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predeterminate counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um 
committed to those people so those who come must be aware that i am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit and that coming to that ministry can make it possible i was teaching the prayer department on tuesday during their prayer and i was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres are we together now when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible so the lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place please um ladies and gentlemen i want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people i know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation they just love to see sinners saved that's wonderful but um this is not one of those platforms believe me i want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit this is not a minor contribution to what god is doing on earth if you if you see it that way you will you will not give your best there's been a lot of prophecy about zaria right from before some of us were born there's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season so we're not just stumbling into a move of god resident within the north no there is a mystery behind this move of god that is coming in this season and what god is doing and so i want us to understand that we are prophecy being played jesus in the book of luke chapter 4 the bible says reading from verse 16 downward that he took the book the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something i pray that one day as you study the bible you will see koinonia there that as you study you will suddenly connect and say god said this will happen we are seeing that this is not just a circumstance but this is prophecy hallelujah i need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared it's very very important there is nothing listen there is no major move of god that happens without being spoken about i used to see these days years ago in visions i never knew it would be this way glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this and i knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of god can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and 
vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it i want you to value it i want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of god you know how pastors say look we are going places and the members say i'll be there with you this is not one of those things it's not just that we are going places you will see how this move fits into prophecy it will happen i've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional brothers and sisters let me tell you if you are here seated in this place tonight is because there is prophecy upon your life believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here i'm not motivating you i am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why god made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories listen as a school pay attention as though you are being trained for something great i've always given my life and the presence of god and the word of god utmost seriousness you never see me distracted in the house of god and in the presence of god you must please pay attention this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally 
to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional I want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit hallelujah you can pretend uh, there's nothing usual about it but i tell you if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say god but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that would we'll be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and its power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie 
are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believe they lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you are only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor 
and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clear hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things, saying the same things, having the same convictions. No, the word of God alters your convictions. Something about you must change. Something about you must change. Something about your prayer life must change. Something about your passion for the word. Something about your interpretation of the word. Something about the ideology of God you knew growing up must shift. It must be altered. Are we together now? Something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit must change in your life. If that is not happening, you are not changing. You are not changing. I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer. I detest it. I'm obsessed with progress. I like to see progress. That's why I hate stagnancy. Anyone who is close to me knows that. I'm constantly in a state of transition. Change. You can't be in the same level for a long time. Intellectually, physically. When we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations, part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy. There are some of us, there was one stone near your house from the time you were born. That stone is still there. Nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better? It's still there. As a monument that does not motivate anything. Only brings pain and regret. You remember they flogged you near that stone. You remember that's where they drove you out of the house. Nothing to inspire you. The word of God should change you. That at the end of every koinonia service, you should just sit down like this and get up. I like it when the word of God enters people and I study the reactions of people to the word. Not just, oh, preach, preacher. That's, there's a place for that, but th that your spirit is, is receiving something and you're saying, look, what am I doing? It's, it's, God is giving me too much opportunity. I'm wasting grace. I'm making the word of God of non-effect. Let the word of God challenge me. He said, the spirit entered into me, Ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2, and set me upon my feet. The spirit entered. When he spake unto me, he brought an idea that is superior to that which I have known. And it compels change. Change with results immediately. That you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately. Make certain vows and commitments. Enter into certain strong personal covenants with God on account of what you have heard. The Bible says, meditate on these things. It says, give yourself wholly to them. It says that you're profiting. Brothers and sisters, ask God how much I pray for you. I don't think I pray for you. I pray for myself one-tenth of the way I pray for you. And my prayer is not God, give them cars, give them houses. That's a stupid prayer. The prayer is, oh God, let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery. That's what will produce every other thing. You know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery? That you come into oneness with these mysteries. You know them. You are persuaded about their reality. And they begin to produce remarkable results in your life. Financial prosperity, spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me. I don't know about other preachers, but I hate being the only one. I know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy, but I hate being the only one 
who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when i see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people it gives me great joy so it pains me when after a long time our level of spiritual metamorphosis slow we must step up this year in the name of jesus christ say amen you see if you don't step up a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite you must expect revival revival and awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out part of the vision god has given us is to make this place a place of refiring a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where it used to be long tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here i'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we are operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of christ today every city is supposed to have these provisions when a city does not have that provision there is no apostolic authority over their city the hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city please i want you to hear what i'm saying you can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities it's not a name it's not a title it's an office they are the gatekeepers 
of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city. Stop Koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city. That's when you will know what we represent in the spirit. Never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people. God's idea is that in every city, there must be apostolic authorities. But because of the disalignment of many people, those who have called have, have been called have refused to align. God will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there. This is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you, but I will multiply your grace. You see that? When I multiply your grace, I will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage, like a territory, will also enter certain dimensions. You will know when an apostolic authority has expanded. You will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration if a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching it's kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person. The word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament. The grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace. Even if you are a quiet person. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Oh, 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 If our parents understood this structure, many of them will never be where they are now. They are sincere people, but they are victims of the disorganization of the church. So they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them. Are we together? The church structure was so designed such that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry. When it comes to these matters, it's by the Spirit. No, it's by the Spirit. You don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build, is a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening. It's more than the words we speak. 
there is a spirit communication if it were words believe me you'll be tired by now there is a difference between newness and freshness will you open up the gates open up the door will you open up the gates open up the doors mandala kabaradosh Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. I don't lie. I don't lie. Yeah. I don't lie. Yeah. You reign on high. Sing in your name. Malaka Parakos Katabrande Gadebas. We will rise. Eda Nana Maria Mosu Nana Mariana. Sing Adona 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 Adona. Just the voices. I don't know. I don't know. Mende Kalabasu to Pudia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on I. You reign on I. Sing I don't know. I don't know. Hena maso na 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 Adonai, you reign on Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on high. Adonai. The last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon. So many people have received his message without carrying his mantle. A truck hit somebody in his church. Pieces the leg. He stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back. It was not a strange miracle. That was the miracle of ushers. We have lost so much we are not aware. We don't know our spiritual heritage. Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! 
and everybody claims he's doing something i don't say this in a cynical way my heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry nothing current in what the spirit is doing we celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suits and we have a nice car to prove that it is working is that how much we love the body we have lost touch with our spiritual heritage we don't know what happened before we came and we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of god a custodian of a mystery is also a historian one who meticulously studies the dealings of god how did god move in the 50s how did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time full time your entire life is spent guiding the people of god ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters is more than that it's more than that. It's more than that. This place is a place of healing. A place of miracles. My goodness, the number of text messages I get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming. Overwhelming. When banks close for public holiday, it affects a territory. If they close by Thursday, people cannot wait for Monday. Monday morning, everybody is standing and arguing with their ATMs, no matter how much they have in their account, because they, they miss the bank for three days. I'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival. The spirit of true revival. Night on night, you reign on night. Revelation chapter 3. In your name, we will rise. Night on night, you reign on night. Casting crowns, lifting hands. Bowing heart is what I've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus, see, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of Christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing 
there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent there are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying 10,000. Somebody is saying 1 million. You say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. All hell will fight it. And those people will usually be Christians. We owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things. There has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when israel starts messing up moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the lord satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there there is there are no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he is doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your goat and you see a christian dragging a he goat to a a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me are you hear what I'm saying? I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. 
they will criticize me in the day and call in the night you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing thou fountains of the deep and weep kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do. We must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for God to find a people. Listen, don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God. What are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to... They just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me. I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me, this mystery, this mystery, it will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little. People are looking. They are feeling offended for your prayer life. Because they are hoping you backslide. So that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them. Recycling of revelations in the body of Christ. Because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh. Things are happening over territories. We pastors are moving around with deaf ears. No seeing eyes. No hearing ear. Please, we are going to pray. Just for one minute. 
before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it my God is so much bigger than this yeah, this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it oh don't deceive yourself you know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. It's calling us deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper, he's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy a reawakening A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray how do i know that a territory please help me how do i know that a territory is under the influence of a revival thank you there are certain parameters number one the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for god corporately not just individually there is a restoration of god consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history 
when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in that this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not because they're all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of evan roberts people would lay hands on the magazine just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take over. people will start falling under the anointing repenting by themselves having visions of jesus restoration of love and passion for god don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out like the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out like the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and, and and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between god speaking to you in your secret place and god speaking to a territory god has his mouthpieces everywhere and then compromises begin to come in what you would have talked about you no longer talk about let me tell you how satan destroys great men he makes us victims of our messages if satan knows that god has anointed me to liberate people in an area he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold 
I'm crying out like the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. You see, if you love God because of husband, the day the husband comes, there's no more pursuit to love God. You see why we teach? Look, you know, I teach you a balanced teaching here. When you tie your love for God to things, as a bride, you are in for a shock. I can love God because of anointing. I hope you know that. And that anointing can lead me to go and fast because I want power. The day the power comes and I can have one or two results, I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I... You don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here? It's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So, it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? Success can distract men. Please hear this. There are many teachings on success that I'll bring this year. But let me tell you, success can distract more than failure. In fact, failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong. But success can distract. Whenever you begin to see your candle rise, brothers and sisters, that's when to catch God. That's not when to leave him and say, everybody behold the celebrity. You will die like a chicken. When Satan wants to throw you, he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you. He throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again. Because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why certain people will not be serious with God and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody. And then something will happen and crash them down. Love for God. This night... We are addressing our love for God. Lovest thou me more than this. One of the first indices of a true revival. We can look at Zaria as a city and Samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city. We can look at ABU as a campus and know whether our love for God has diminished. When somebody... Let me not go ahead of myself. Number two, marks characteristics of a true revival. Number two, the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring. Brothers and sisters, may God never make our territories without men who can speak the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is out to frustrate men of God and water down people who can speak the truth. Please let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian, many things must change in your life. Your lifestyle must change. Your conversation must change. Not by the energy of the flesh. There is an alignment. Your job is to do that alignment. If you do it well, the transformation must happen. There's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of Christ. To a point that somebody will have to say, I'm a Christian. For it, Oh, you're a Christian, so you're a brother in the faith. That's a serious issue. Are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about Koinonia, for instance, and say, ah, Koinonia, you know, Apostle, ah, you know you to see me. You say, you mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of Christ. They called them Christians. 
who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person, no, but I know he's a Christian? can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking my spirit is okay you are not all right please let's let's end this you are not all right let me tell you the truth no you are not all right you are watching porn. see you see let me tell you something i'm not condemning you don't get me wrong the difference between a christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the spirit when when you are sinning unconvicted you are not in christ are you getting what i'm saying now yeah if by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit you went to your friends they reminded you of gulda that you used to take you don't know what happened you gave into the flesh that conviction is a sign that you are in christ that you can return and the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there. The true spirit of holiness. Please. I speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, I got to hear of course one of the ladies ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in Koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing I'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you leave jesus i leave i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave jesus I live today. I live to pray. A true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat. The spirit of holiness. Let me tell you. If we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory, we will never experience the fullness of God. We will not see miracles and signs and wonders. Please, let's not mock God. I know what I'm saying is hard, but you too, you know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life. And the key to unholiness is carelessness. Bros, you did. There's one party we're having. He said, yeah, but I don't drink again. They just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. 
I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor. It's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me, but to remind me that you are still waiting. I receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness. Those outside, please make sure you are laying your hand. Oh, I separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh. The impulses of the flesh. The appetites of the flesh. The appetite. The lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it. But something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely. And I allowed. I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place, I receive grace. 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 It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh. Remember the cross. The place where grace comes from. Your old man has been nailed. Therefore, mortify your body. Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, O oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation that everything about your life there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job in school in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify god that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say lord i overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge god is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling visiting the guy carelessly doing all kinds of things carelessly you are a christian god is bringing this message to salvage you get back to order get back to order Get back to order. Get back to order. The true spirit of holiness. No. You can't start accepting bribe. Not at this level of your life. You used to hate it before. Don't all of a sudden love bribe. You are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you. And the righteousness of God. Compels you. To hate immorality, not out of fear, but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by Him. Make sure it doesn't leave. That's a fire you must not allow to die. Aside from immorality and the rest, what of vain glory? What of self seeking? What of vanity, ambitions that are not consistent with Christ? Please pray. This is a threshing floor tonight. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. If nobody has told you there is a problem with your life, I'm telling you there is. If you are giving room to the flesh, I don't care what excuse you bring. God does not condemn, but he does not condone evil. Many of us have been praying, Lord, I want you to use me. I want to see your power. I'm showing you the secret. It overrides fasting and prayer. 
Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place. The third sign is massive salvation of souls. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. It's not enough for people to come and be saved. They must be saved well. Well to stay well and grow. Massive salvation. That is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival. Listen. If there is no true passion for souls in your heart, something is wrong. Let me prove to you that it's unnatural. How many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident? Nobody asks who is a Christian there or who is a Muslim. Everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying. Every time you see sinners, I want you to imagine an accident scene. Imagine a fatal accident. What would you do? There are some of us, we have roommates, we have people in our workplaces. It's until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there. And you see them crying and say, this is what you have been enjoying. Say, I'm too fine. How can I tell this guy to come? How can I lead him to Christ? Massive salvation. By the way, the Lord, while I was preparing this, the Lord gave me an instruction. I'll say it during the announcement, but then let me say it again. By God's grace, next Friday's miracle service, you're coming with two sets of requests. The first is the names of your family members and loved ones, those who you have tried to get them born again. Come and watch God will do for them this year. You will watch what God will do. He will surprise you. I, 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 please, you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down write no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when Saul landed on the floor, he knew that this was God. See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please, write it down. Not names of enemies, and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life passionate about where his heart is are we together if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that would be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say okay, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you you've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again i remember one of our ladies who years ago they were all unbelievers you know non-christians now i mean and god i mean saved her she became saved i think while on campus and we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings god touched her brother i think god touched her mother three of them were all saved remaining the father the father was a hardened he wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom we told her keep praying don't, don't say god will not touch them keep praying one day she received a call he was saved in living faith when he was saved i was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car is i don't know it's like his family members they drove down and say which depression are you in that would have made you to become a christian ah you will see salvations that will scare you the day you go and look at somebody in your family you will think it's a mistake you just yeah you say what are you doing say i'm praying in tongues say are you joking say I, i'm a sanctuary keeper 
I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the world since. I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem ministry. I said, it's a lie. So one day, he called me. And we were talking. We just spoke. And he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance. And tell her eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. They say, no, no, no. Don't eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. We are, someone is telling you, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, use koinonia as a platform to save sinners. You see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming. I tell you, give them chance to come. I remember somebody... Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly I think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these, these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what I'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching he saw a vision of Jesus outside and he got born again the day he came for counseling I could not believe it ushers I think one or two people there's one of our brothers in ushers too who was like that now totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother who comes back once in three months. I'm telling you when the power of God lands on them. We don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's why. Because all we are teaching about in church is money. We don't know the power. If a power can raise a dead body, is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change Number four. Let's run. The fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of God. Now, please hear me. I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart. And I, I mean no condemnation with this. But when as men of God we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no, I'm like that. Me, God gave me this. I don't believe in that concept. I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there. But brothers and sisters, people must be saved. And they must have passion for the house of God. Because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom. The church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. It's not enough for people to be born again. That's why we, co we collect their details. We send them text messages and follow them up. What's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers? Once in a while, you send them a scripture. Maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say, maybe it's a scripture. Love not the world. Looks at your phone. Looks at that bottle. And he knows. And the spirit of God, you have given him access to kick in. And he drops it never to pick it again. 
there's no support structure in the body of Christ to help sinners stand. Once they are born again, we say, okay, now just find your way back to your seat and the Lord help you. That's why when people get born again, we recommend to them. Because the ministry is still growing, we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do. Right? We recommend them to go to the prayer department. At least for one month. Even if they don't intend to be members. Just to join. That's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people. That's why pray for us. Pray for this ministry that God will take us to the next level fast. And you will see the things that are in store for the body of Christ. Passion for the house of God. When coming to the house of God. Hear me. Let me use Koinonia. This is our platform. When coming to Koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance. Please, I want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life. Are we together now? Yeah. You just sit down and say, Kai, this thing self to six. I will even sit down outside. It's like, it's cold. I'll be, those things are indices. It's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us. Remember the scripture. It says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion. Passion. There are people, you see them January, Koinonia, and then later on, Maybe when result is out or something, it just coincides with a miracle service. They now drag themselves and come and sit outside. And of all the prophecies that are coming, they are just waiting for when they talk about academics. The moment they say, for your academics, they, now, they are now invited. Immediately they finish, they run. That game you are playing with God, you will not win. Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small. What we are doing in the church is sheep stealing. What did I call it? Sheep stealing. When you steal a sheep, a sheep is not a fool. It grew somewhere. Eventually, ah, you see, I am the good shepherd. My sheep here know my voice. And we, we steal sheep. We are, we are trying to steal choices, quality sheep. So if Sam, please stand up, Sam. If Sam is a millionaire, I want that kind of sheep around because I know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place, that attitude. Every time we see unbelievers, you see somebody with his draggy jeans, you know this guy, you even need to support him back. We don't like those kind of souls. The person calls you daddy, say, who is your, I'm not your father, I don't know you. I just got you born again, please look for somebody else. These are the kinds that say, ah, this is my son, you are, I'm well pleased. That carnal attitude, are you getting what I'm saying? So, when, if that's why I say it to the glory of God, and you know here, I know no man after the flesh. I will not go to anybody's house and say, um, you are a senator, uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry, we, we, have, we, we want to buy a bus. God will use people. There is nobody that I will reject on grounds of anything. Whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love. When you see a beautiful lady, say you are you are my daughter. Daughter, how are you? And you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry. She's wondering, what do you like? Me or the beauty? See, members are not idiots. They know pastors who are serious. They know. They know pastors who are playing games. You just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies. These are this is what we do that destroy us. Are we together now? Or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that. And oh no, there is a place for honor. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying, this thing we are doing is too much. It's sheep stealing. How many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints? 
the bible says the kingdom of god is like a, a remember the story of a shepherd right 99 sheep one got missing what did he do to the 99 they were all right so he left them and went still not minding if he loses the 99 went to look for that one is that our attitude when somebody comes to stand you are looking whether he's holding an envelope if it's not you look at his shoe look at his watch and say let's pray father help this person and you are praying don't waste my time here but when somebody comes package you are like what are they what let me let me know the needs if you're a pastor here please do this thing truly god is going to judge us not in a condemning way we are going to be accountable for this act as if there is an authority above you members know let me tell you there is no member who will see a man of god talking like i'm talking who will not love him and be open to him do you know why many of our members in different churches i'm speaking apostolically there are many people listening do you know why many members they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy he lays down his life for his sheep passion for the house of god number five quickly passion for the word indices that measure a revival in a place passion for the word passion for prayer passion for a life of worship you can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word jordan bookstore is there he will tell you i know that people love the word in this place I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow there are people who are already there getting books studying buying concordance truly let me tell you i'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes you will come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable then all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please let's take this thing of god seriously when do you close yourself and study not just devotional where you read fast as you are praying you're on your way going oh i see this uh, god and then scripture for reading luke chapter this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice amen you just drop it and run ask the person what he's running towards he will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life and we have left the word of life I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Passion for the world. Passion for worship. Many of us don't worship. We pray and we study the word. There is a place for worship in your spiritual growth. If you don't have worship tapes. Now, technology has made it easy. Put these things. I have a selection in my phone. I call them deep worship there's one called encounter that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level i have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them has it happened to you like that yeah you put the songs don't just say christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs no 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 separate this thing and take god seriously you have a selection the moment you just hear a christian one there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it small just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it 
you will never find one on Christian song in my phone. I'm not one of those people who say, look, we need to work with technology. I'm not a fool. Technology has failed us. Many things, governments have failed us. It's obvious they are ignorant. We used to say it before, but there was no room to expose it. Right now, it's clear that the government of nations are clueless. Come to the kingdom and mend the ways of God. The years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit. We are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now. A time will come when those who had that oil, they will not have anything again. Satan does not give anything free. Have you not learned? A day will come. The day he meets all the people celebrating him, they will pay with their life. Satan never gives you a thing free. He will give you, you will think he's dash, but his business. He will come in the future for everything. Anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death. The end is death. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the word. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Oh, it's beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you work. When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. You cry to God for a good phone. He gave it to you. Use it well. Use it well. Not just for sending text messages. Use it well. How much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number, let's hurry up, we're almost done. When there is a true revival in a place, there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement. Listen, revival affects the quality of the living of the people with India. Don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes, um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer. No, when there is a real revival, the quality of the life of God's people is improved. Almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival. It's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something. A lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed. Because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well. Amen. Seven. When there is the true spirit of revival in a place, there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies 
in this place that's what is going to happen to many of you this night koinonia remains a place of healing a place of miracles because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power they say look um, um healing when they say healing they are quick to say no 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 emotional healing please physical healing people are sick their bodies are sick are we together now yes there's a place for emotional healing but we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not if somebody is blind and is healed he's healed is that not true we must contend for grace even in this dimension say amen and may it happen through your hands there is a joy when God uses you. There is a joy when God does things around you. But when it happens through your hands, it's a blessing. I trust that God will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people. That they note you. And say, ah, I, I came to Amaka and she prayed with me. And doors just opened. Great testimony. Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, say no, it's because you came for Koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews. I guarantee you any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film there's silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that an atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts, graces, and mantles. Impartations. See, revivals are times where God recruits people into his army. Most people stepped into the call of God upon their life at revivals. When people are just praying non-stop for a while, the Holy Ghost separates me, Paul and Barnabas. There has to be release of mantles, graces, impartations. It happens during revivals. There will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place. Remember a man in the Bible called Agabus. He had daughters and all of them were prophets. There are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children. God knows my children. God knows. Before they arrive, there will be a special recording waiting for them. As soon as they arrive, straight on. Before the nonsense that society brings, this and that, you are stupid, you are foolish. No. They will receive something. They will start having visions and encounters of Jesus. That's why I respect and I want us to appreciate them. I respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children. Let them sleep and sleep in the presence of God. It was in the presence of God Samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of God. Even if you must sleep, do it in the presence of God. Because although your body is sleeping, your spirit is receiving. Impartations of mantles and graces. That's what is happening to some of you. Some of you in the nearest future, God will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing I'm doing right now. When you stand, one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down. And you will tell them once upon a time I sat down quietly. I remember when I used to go for meetings and sit down and I hear the man of God say, out of this place, God will raise great men. And people are shouting amen. Some are sleeping, some are playing, some are not serious. And I just sit down there and I say, really? I could imagine the angels and all these people saying, young man, pay attention. There are destinies tied to you. Very quickly, what is the price? What is the requirement for revival? And we're going to pray. I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done. Sorry, I may not have time to read the scriptures. Is God blessing you tonight? 
the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first price you want to host the glory of god the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that i found very interesting isaiah 52 verse 11 i'll i'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us second timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure it says having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his he says and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity iniquity is not just sin fornication and the rest no it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh let's read this scripture together one to read depart ye depart ye go ye out from thence touch no unclean thing it says go ye out from the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord those that host precious things from god he says depart depart ye consecration consecration very very important set apart for his service set apart the bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself we want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time it doesn't happen no consecration consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent you know that that dedication they have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom you must dedicate your whole life some of us have given god half of our lives some of us gave god everywhere excluding your head and your thinking some of us gave god every no 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 you have to give him everything you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty, O morning star, you truly are. Number two, the second prize is hunger and thirst. You want to see revival in your life, there must be a hunger for it isaiah 44 verse 3 and psalm 63 verse 1 and 2 i'm giving this to us very quickly because of time he will pour water upon him that is thirsty him that is what no. there must be a thirst i will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring Do you have that hunger? I'm telling you, I have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life. So you must work on your mind. Philippians chapter 2, same Philippians. Notice that Paul, Paul seemed to draw it in this church in Philippi, this issue of mindset. Chapter 2 and verse 5, he now encourages the saints. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He's teaching here that for you to establish victory in your life you must allow the mind to be in you there was an understanding that jesus had there was a belief system that jesus had any trouble is frustrated when your mind does not partner with it every victory that comes from christ is also frustrated when you do not have a mindset requirement poverty depends on a mindset to stay infirmity depends on a mindset to stay causes and yokes and all kinds of things depend on a mindset to stay i think it was a preacher one time i don't know where i heard this um but there was a preacher one time who um spoke about is it the 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 elephant that is used in a circus how that they would chain the elephant or something like that and then it was used to a rope being tied and it was limited and that because of the 
it, it was already used to it one time they even removed the rope and the elephant would not go past that because it, the rope has been tied in his mind the worst way to bind people is to bind them in their minds when i bind you in your mind i can lose your hands you are in a bigger prison are we together so you must learn to stand in faith with god and believe with him some of you may have never received properly the miracle service because you are hoping that you will come and watch others get blessed would you leave such a distance to just come and clap for others there is a level of insistence the woman with the issue of blood said if i may but touch the hem of his garment she kept rehearsing before the arrival of jesus blind batim you said all of you have eyes i have an eye too but i can't see and if jesus is passing around let me just hear the sound of jesus and i will cry thou son of david have mercy on me there is a level of insistence that will force darkness to go are we together tonight so i want you to believe listen let me tell you this it is powerful when the power of god flows in and to and through a mindset that has been so constructed you will see the potentials of the life of god we have many destructive belief systems that continue to short circuit the power of god you can pray for a lady like this for instance in the name of jesus may god give you a great life partner but she already has a destructive mindset that will never even allow the life partner see her her mindset has become darkness a depraved selfish unspiritual mind full of low esteem which god's son will see that kind of that kind of um, scenario and be glad to come and marry and there are men with self-centered self-destructive attitudes so listen you have a responsibility and this is the part of the gospel that i think we must balance in church the gospel that continues to say god is exclusively responsible he is responsible for betting the victory but you are responsible for partnering for the transfer and the manifestation to happen in your life it is true and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped the vessel in this case can be your mindset the vessel in this case can be your understanding is god speaking to us tonight someone can be here and you can make up your mind and say lord from january till october i thank you but i've not seen the prophetic word you've given me i'm insisting that this night is not only my night of reception it's my night of recovery and that by next miracle service i'm only coming to testify and clap for others i i name today as the day of my salvation hallelujah yes god is able the bible says it now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think not ask or sing ask or think and then it says according to the power not lives in him the power allowed to walk in us the power allowed to walk in us god's power is like a dam the one allowed to walk in you is like the the opening of the tap you can open a tap so small that it brings water drop by drop you have short circuited the potential of the dam the dam is misrepresented by the allowance that the tap gives are we together so god wants to bring us to a point where he will move us into dimensions of grace dimensions of victory now thanks be to god now thanks be to god now thanks be to god what does it take for god to change a family listen let me tell you this look up don't get used to pain and don't get used to failure continue to insist until your life reflects christ this is this is where the labor of a believer is in the spirit your insistence 
until the things that you now see become the things you do not see insistence lord it is not your will for this family to be in poverty begging from hand to mouth anointed but begging anointed but begging anointed but begging every good thing that happens in the family you receive it with fear because you know it will not last and you are right it will not last because it was only received momentarily it was not sustained by a requisite level of mindset that will keep it whatever your mind holds is yours forever truly whatever your mind holds is yours if your mind holds trouble is truly yours if your mind holds victory it is yours are we together so you must insist this night there are all kinds of things god wants to do listen let me tell you this very quickly in a miracle service god does many things a miracle service is not just a healing service a miracle service is a service that allows for the power of god to birth and sustain supernatural solutions everybody say supernatural solutions solutions whose origin and operation is higher than the realm of men it truly is stupid for an individual to sit down and start asking can god change my life in one day can god change my life in two days can god turn my family before november god are we together are you guys done have you fixed it it's not working okay so please Let's work on it as fast as we can. Make up your mind that my life must become an expression of the beauty and the glory of God. Make it a project. It doesn't matter where you are now. Make up your mind that my family must become a reflection of the beauty and the glory of God. As at the time you are speaking, you may not have where to live as at the time you are speaking there's no food even at home now to eat don't worry stand in faith don't fake anything there's no need faking anything because there's no need faking what can be real you've heard me say there is no point faking anointing there is no point faking power in ministry you can stand and say lord as it is right now my church looks like a place where people just stop to drink water because of how powerless it is but lord let something from heaven come upon my church and i stand in faith and i believe with you everybody you pray for is not healed everybody you speak over is not changed but no problem you stand and look at your siblings and nobody in that house looks like the future everybody looks like the past stand in faith i refuse to give my the, my mindset as a donation everybody in your family is not married everybody in your family has no children don't partner with the devil they have all donated their mindsets be the last key that will refuse satan and say no way if god is finding hope in this family let my mindset be the gateway that allows god to come in please hear what i tell you not elder sister no child this one no child you two you have been married how long say two and a half years say all of us are the same you have you are the last card that god is depending upon to become the doorway for his power to come and now the devil is tricking you through frustration to donate your mindset if everybody in your family is failing you can stand and say lord find one doorway that can allow you remember there is no miracle until there is at least five loaf and two fish you have to give god something the five loaf will allow other loaves come hallelujah i never think failure i truly mean it i'm not just talking i never think defeat i believe i'm victorious i live in the consciousness of the jealousy of god over my life it's true i have loved thee with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness it's not just scripture to me it is life it is god revealing his intent to me 
this ministry will never go down it will continue to be from glory to glory it is true no 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 I, i'm being as honest and modest with you as as possible because retrogression has an explanation you can explain why things deplete you can explain why things retrogress and you can explain why things will remain afloat regardless of what happens hallelujah you are here tonight in this place in the presence of god you are here tonight many of you have traveled from several nations some of you have traveled from different places to come please hear me my brothers and my sisters the first miracle that god is doing tonight is calling your attention to the partnership that your thought life would have been creating with the devil we call all kinds of nonsense does it look like god if you were god is that how you will walk are we together now you must insist and say no this is not the character of god this is not the best of god god cannot bring 11 children to be scrounging from hand to mouth and the only employed person in that family is earning fifteen thousand. god is not wicked something is wrong the moment you call darkness darkness then light can fight it when it has to do with dealing with issues don't be ashamed don't be afraid to stand on god's side are we together so a miracle service allows the multifaceted dimensions of god's power to find expression some of you are here trusting god to break and crack down yokes of infirmity once and for all but do you believe do you agree with god apostle i'm ss this thing will never change it will be unto you according to your faith apostle i know i'm just here no problem they will lay hands on me but that that persuasion is not yet there apostle i believe god will prosper me but in your mind you are looking at that class you are looking at um the fact that your only uncle that had access to bail all of you out died last year and you say it has finished no apostle there have been too much delay in my life by now i should be at this level at this level but restoration is possible let your mind open that door see when you know who god is you don't, there is no fear and regret in your life because the bible says for we know the rest don't know but we who are in the kingdom and are aware of the systems of advantage provided for by god in christ we know that in a believer's life there is nothing that is really a disadvantage it's true if you were employed as a graduate in 2000 by now you most likely with diligence and service minus corruption and wickedness you probably would be a director by now are we together yes and now you've not even gotten a job so if you get a job now most likely you are over age already they will not employ you and so you can sit down and say this thing self i'm dead is finished it's over because you have given god you have told god how to move in your life and not allowed him move how he wants to move god if it's must you move this way and god says i want to do more than you can imagine and he will have to make do with the allowance that your mindset allows him but someone can say lord i'm tired of allowing you to pass through my life only through salary thank you for salary but el shaddai where are you answer my family That is the day you will see what will happen one day and it will look to you like a dream. Someone will call you and say, the Lord instructed me to transfer 30 million to this family. You say, please tell EFCC before you talk to me. Let, let's just be sure you are genuine. And they say, God instructed me and I'm obedient. Then you will now know that the testimony of others are not a lie. Pain can make you think everyone is lying. Did God really step in like that? Did God really anoint you like that? hallelujah expect god to step into your family expect god to step into your life expect god to put favor upon you the reason why people succeed in this life the favor of god is true expect it life by default and without the assistance of god is impossible to live it's not hard it's impossible you will never be able to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and live life as it should be unassisted by god no 
so he interjects your life with different systems of advantage like mercy like favor like speed like restoration all these things are divine forces that work together to make your life become what the word of god says should become so a woman here for instance who has been barren say for six seven years now if god gives you one child that's good news but that's progress not restoration because you will still have to wait three years get pregnant again wait three years get pregnant you must add 12 years to have the four children so god gives you triplets in nine months now that one is no longer progress that's restoration he has brought nine years spacing in nine months are we together god calculates your salary like arias and brings it through favor in one transfer god shifts you to a level of anointing that you should have walked in had it been your uncle allowed you to be diligent attending church serving in the house of god there are certain levels in the spirit you would have walked in right now but because he stopped you and clamped you down and things didn't look like they were working many things just went down in your life and because of that watch this because of that you got grounded and could not know god fast and god can lead you to an uncommon mentorship an uncommon anointing in six months you will receive a grace that is 15 years old <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> jacob collected esau's birthright he didn't know that esau was supposed to suffer seven years when he collected his birthright esau's own plus his own he served 14 years it's not about exchanging of women it's destiny playing out their family had delay i hope you know from abraham it was a challenge so both of the sons individually whether they was collecting birthright or not they would have paid their seven years watch this but jacob collected Esau. it only played out using women but it still played out that means you can collect someone's speed too you see that it's true sit down please sit down you can come with a load that is supposed to be 10 years according to the normal sequence of occurrence based on the allowance your family gives and you come under the influence of a covenant that forces your life to look like the grace upon that territory it's true find a way of believing what i'm saying i've shown you luke chapter one to tell you the certainty of these things it is not those who like you that bless you alone it's those who are directed for everybody to like you do you know how long it takes to like a man sometimes you just need to hear god and obey fast your life requires speed hallelujah there are times because of what god wants to do in your life when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you whether they are praying or not he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you he will hurry them for your sake when you come for a meeting like this be conscious of four things number one be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern be conscious of it when these words come don't think they are just empty speakings the carnal man cannot discern the things of god the word of god is like a tray you have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it are we together now the word of god is a tray it carries miracles carries deliverance carries healings so when you receive the word the engrafted word you now take what is in it be conscious of the prophetic word number two be conscious of the covenant covenant is a very deep spiritual word many people just shout covenant around but they don't even know what it means listen a covenant is a system that commits god and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes it's a covenant there is the covenant of answered prayer 
there is a covenant of god's presence there is a covenant of results every man that god truly calls and every ministry that god truly ordains there are underlying spiritual covenants the platform upon which god put his vow and his integrity that has touching this and this i will make happen it's true also be conscious of the graces you see that the graces that are available within that territory you cannot receive a man's covenant you can only partake of it but you can receive graces you are a pastor you come and your church is grounded you only have 50 members during your annual thanksgiving thank god for that but something is wrong god is a god of increase you can come with hearts open to receive the grace how about hardship things not working well how about your spiritual growth you are at the same level for five years the knowledge of scripture zero health of your prayer life zero you are a man of god and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you and you have to understand the way this works we are going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly second corinthians 9 and verse 8 praise the lord read with me please koinonia ready one to read stop 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 god is able to make all grace let me explain that to you please all of you come stand anywhere you want to stand just stand anywhere scatter yourself around don't come close to me just stand watch this call these guys graces the grace for prosperity the grace for favor the grace for speed the grace for spiritual fire the grace for influence watch this access to the hearts of men this is you this is your destiny and the bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some i can have the grace for prosperity and i'm rich but i suffer but i succeed you are rich but no man helps you because you don't have favor you only have prosperity the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men if you do not have access to the hearts of men you don't have favor you may have resources so this guy has prosperity so he will labor wake up in the morning sleep late in the night eat the bread of sorrow mix it with hard work and eventually prosper but as far as spiritual fire is concerned the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of god is not in him so that grace is not there he has some but not all and the part the grace dimension he does not have the deficiency of it will show in his life he is getting richer but not as his soul prospers this is the grace he needs when you pray and intercede for this man now god will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of god that has this dimension so that in addition it will be added to him are we together now now listen very carefully please look up everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands 
So you come for koinonia miracle service. Dry! Nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too. Because what is around you is a, is a report card telling what is on you. Are we together now? You obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love God while you are wealthy. If you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth, you are leaving God. That anointing did not come from this ministry. The grace for this ministry has been it has been edited through a covenant to ensure that as men rise, their hearts also rise for God. Not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave God. You don't honor anything that has to do with God again. No, it is as you prosper, even as your soul prospers. It's Babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul. Watch this. So you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you travel from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think is the spirit of revelation it's not revelation is speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and God is able God is able God is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what calls listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation 
to know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray Let there be restoration. Please bring them out quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's save time, please. In the Brekedeke to Shilakata. Restoration now. I speak it by the Spirit. The power of God is still coming on people. Recover. Recover. By the Spirit. Recover. I stretch my hands. Recover. By the power of prophecy. Recover. Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. E Paris ke barashanda la katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery. Recovery, recovery, shamana katabadakata, restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare inside, outside, all the overflows, anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now, be free now. I will hasten my word to perform it i will not just perform it i will give speed to my word the word is quick and powerful i declare again any family here any individual under the yoke of delay i speak to you by the spirit that yoke is broken now that yoke is broken now broken by the spirit hallelujah now i want to pray please listen i have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may god grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you find people running by the spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. 
take that grace now. Speed. Parush Kabarakata. Speed. Career speed. I give speed to your life. Speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy, please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night, things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river and I'm bringing something out and the Lord says the destiny of this family in the name of Jesus that's the daughter I command by the spirit every planting that is not of the Lord I overturn and I uproot now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Naomi I'm hearing a name Naomi we have to hurry up I want to pray for the sick Naomi Hello, Kim Madonna. Ah, hello. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS. By the spirit of the living God. And I decree and declare like the Hebrew women you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say. Baby is breached. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, how can this? You know, I'm saying you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Huh? Were you backing a baby? That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. 
even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now as I speak overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus I pray for you. Come my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are. But in Jesus name. There is a, like, like, a, like an, almost like an evil anointing. That makes only married people to look for you. In the name of Jesus. By the God of heaven. I lift that negative thing off your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I hear the name Magdalene. I don't know if... Magdalene, I want to pray very quickly. We have to pray for the sick. You are the covenant keeping. as you can Jesus! I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady I'm seeing this lady but all I'm seeing is snakes completely I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear. Grace for you. The favor that is on your life, I command it to start speaking. It will not only be a name that is on you. It will speak right now in Jesus' name. Your sister, your name is Magdalene. Come, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus, be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene? Come, my dear. I pray for you. Place your hand on your head. I declare, oh God, let this chain be taken now. I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head. Be removed now. Be removed. This, like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity. I remove it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lay your hands on her. So anybody just touch her. Release her now by the Spirit of God. There's no place for you. Take everything that belongs to her. Restore it and go. Now. Now please listen. I want to minister deliverance. Please believe it. 
you may not know the woman from Kenya come it's time for God to change your life please stand up when did you come here uh, yesterday yesterday yes. you came here God is about to turn your life around Amen. Glory. you are still coming and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming Amen. Thank you, Jesus. madam what do you do madam, what do you do I'm a commissioner for human rights commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi yes. in in two weeks I'm going to be in your nation I would like to see you Amen. your nation there is a reason why I'm talking I'm not seeing you alone I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for yes. but I want to pray for you madam because I don't know if you believe it or not you have a political destiny as you are like this looking at me you have a political destiny in Kenya and God by his spirit is going to make this happen but another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life you are a woman that love God there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you will get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace God is going to bring this grace upon you God I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation there is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build I'm seeing foodstuff and I'm seeing different things first it will have to do with young girls people who have been abused and so on but I see it not only that I see women too women God is going to increase your influence I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the spirit carry this grace go to Kenya with it go and excel I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ go with this anointing go and prosper may the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah praise the Lord an angel of the Lord is standing here someone will shout here under a strong anointing I just saw that grace I don't know first I think until the shout happens I know why God just from here right to the back there is an anointing I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here now listen whether you know it or not if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ is about to give way right now <laughs> hallelujah at the count of three hear me whether you are inside outside or following online I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding it's not just a chant my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower not a weak tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved I want to pray for you I know you have shouted in other months but great deliverance great deliverance is about to come your way father i pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the christ that is sitting on the destinies of men and women manipulating their results i stand and call upon the god of jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and i declare let there be deliverance at the count of three Shout that name, Jesus. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please bring them out. Be free now. Overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. All the extension online. I declare be free now from ancestry. Be free from foundation be free from witchcraft bring them out Paru Salikata Barata operations of darkness I'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb and I'm seeing it close it doesn't just mean physical barrenness it means a spirit that is closing the door of results 
many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and I stand by the God of heaven by the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now 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 be open now
Mighty God. A few minutes, we are going to pray for the sick now. Now, please listen. I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one. That's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining. It's just a revelation that God is giving me. There are two angels standing by my left and my right. And every time I see this, God wants me to move. Listen, hear me. Except God is not God. When I pass any road where you are, anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life, it must give way. Now, I only do this for this and overflow one. Afterwards, we are going to pray for the sick. Please, I want you to just believe. I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit I shift you in the Spirit every limitation that does not name the name of Christ I'm praying mantles anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus dimension I'm seeing a chain around here I break that chain now I'm seeing a chain around here let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now break now break now break now Chains be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now from everything that is not of God free now something is breaking here something is breaking here something is breaking here parusha i break it now 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 by the spirit of the living god i break it now mama i break it now i break it now sensing an evil spirit just around here I come against you now I take authority over that influence you must go now go now go now go now go now overflow one lift your voice and pray in the spirit Harusa Sigedesh now listen be your brother's keeper. You don't have to touch me. Please, be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. Let it go now. All tasks, I come against you now. In Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. I'm seeing what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking. Breaking over someone's family. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life. In the 
name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca. They call you Becky. Rebecca. Just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry. It's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from, are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku, A-L something K-U. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on, please. Right here, there is a gentleman who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone i stretch my hands lord i don't know where they are Paruska, Badu, let that grace come on you now strange mantle prayer fire word fire illumination in the spirit receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming to people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of God is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of God New dimensions, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now. Holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is he? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus. Be completely free and I speak to him, Ibrahim. May the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Mm. A time will come God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God but surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing father I lay my hands upon this man let his dealings with the spirit progress in the name of Jesus not only an impartation a dealing that produces real power in the spirit in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ this lady with green this lady you come the Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you two things will happen to you number one I'm seeing restoration God is saying I should tell you he's bringing restoration number two I'm seeing the gift of men please do listen to my message help them on the gift of men God is bringing people strangely to lift you I lay my hands upon you and I pray may this grace be effectual carry that grace right now and you will start having visions visions God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions in the name of Jesus this is very strange what I'm seeing except that I saw it I will not say it stop running away from the call you are a man of God's wife now I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense stop running from the call you are the wife of a man of God a minister of the gospel the Lord will bring performance to his word this thing I tell you is a strange mystery the way God works but in the name of Jesus I place the word of God upon that prophecy it's time for you to not fight the will of God it's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord we are going to pray just one prayer point the Lord is asking me immediately we do that we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her there's a young lady that was wearing glasses I don't if if you are here you are the one what do you do you are going to be very wealthy come are you a lawyer huh this is your mother where are you coming from madam okay you are the reverse woman this lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy because I'm seeing you a lawyer and you are going to you I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize but I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people this is a lot of business people signing contracts helping people to process a lot of things millions huh? that's what that's where she is right now doing some things abroad she's what that's what she's doing right now where she works that's what she's doing now right now where she works because i'm seeing god will just cause them to like her it's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man there are people who are out to genuinely bless yes sir. and i pray for your daughter and i connect her by the spirit amen in the name of jesus amen. she will find these people amen. and in the name of jesus she will shift her to another dimension amen mama god is saying i should tell you forgive does it make sense to you yes, my husband also he's a lawyer but your husband is a lawyer yes that's... what was the issue nothing is happening don't worry ma do you know why you fell under the anointing you fell on behalf of all the troubles in your it wasn't just your personal falling alone there are times that you fall representing all of these troubles because this is not what I'm even saying God is saying I should tell you to forgive forgiveness now it doesn't make sense and God has not given me an interpretation but let me tell you this you see look up the average person seated here has been hurt by someone whether friends are we together uncles relatives people you trusted and they betrayed you let me tell you something about unforgiveness unforgiveness is a terrible spirit is one of the master secrets to delay unforgiveness it will keep you in one place forever you are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive 
the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you we live in a society that is so hot conscious this one hurt me this one did this there are too many things that can create offense the bible says in nothing should you be offended it's a choice mama in the name of jesus please don't cry i don't know what it is and why you are crying but my dear comfort your mother after the prayer eh? in the name of jesus what is before you is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there's a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right mfm my friend you are serious you come from where mfm kano mfm kano how about you mfm calabar how about you lagos lagos i want to pray i'm not saying if you are from mfm just come out like that there are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend I, i'm going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from a bible state there is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes huh? sir you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting yes, huh sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until it starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh very serious with god you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh antony tony in the name of jesus everything that represents witchcraft i join my faith with that of your father and your leader Dr. Daniel Odikoya and I decree in the name of Jesus, be free now. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of death far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Who is looking for a job? Uh -uh, I'm not saying, I'm not on employment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Cardinal Stacy service. The Lord says, I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? 
Stand up. Prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of Jesus become the chief cornerstone. Receive of that grace in the name of Jesus. I speak it so. I make it so. I establish it by the power of prophecy. Let me pray for you. Gentlemen, I don't know if it's you or someone related to you, but there's someone God is giving a job. Someone looking for a job. But I want to pray for you. Father, you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is showing me a lady. I'm not going to ask you to come. God bless you. But I'm lifting up my hand. I'm seeing, you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face. This is what I'm seeing. But that one is not bride of wedding. This is evil. Covering your entire, a human being with almost no head. Huh? And the Lord is saying I should pray that that veil be torn. I don't know who that person is. But right now the power of God is going. There, there, there are many of you I perceive in the name of Jesus. That veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that veil torn into pieces now torn into pieces now inside outside online torn into pieces now the last case I attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting God for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the Christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty I declare by the Spirit of God be free now be free now help them please be free now free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach I call it by his name and I command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders. 
why these things i'm not saying to run consciously i'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of god order in the church are we together the the hand of god now as i speak is coming upon you my soul longs and even thirsts for you my heart and my flesh cries out for the living god for the living god incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face and burning longing for you I declare to all of you that came out by the spirit i shift you go forward now go forward now the power that holds you down i take authority over it in the name of jesus go forward now i release your families to go forward now in the name of jesus now please hear me our time is gone we have to be fast now listen for those who will be laying hands on you don't think that because it is not joshua selman laying hands on you remember i told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace we're about to pray for the sick now now listen please there are three conditions that i will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv number three you are suffering from barrenness it doesn't matter what overflow you are in if you have any of these three cases please with those who are in the main auditorium i want you to join them and come otherwise please all the overflows move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers of protocol anyone trusting god for to be prayed for for healing right now i want you to make your way to the front quickly and then in addition to that the three cases i've mentioned you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up overflow one please walk to your projector stand overflow two i don't know from where now as directed walk to your projector stand overflow three walk to your projector stand um my god i don't know if there's overflow to be then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we are going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you are yet to write your prayer request but adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online i believe that theirs has also been collated we're going to have everything now so that as soon as we are done we'll pray for the request the moment you are done please wave it or pass it to the person um at the aisle where it can be picked 
give them room to write if you need a piece of paper you can help your friend or wave your hand Praise the Lord. Thank God we have some hands tonight. Um, Pastor Jakes and Ejimi will do Overflow 3. Since there will be several people there, Overflow 3. They'll be ministering to Overflow 3. Benga will go to Overflow 1. Promise Overflow 1, 2. Um, Kenny Overflow 2. 2A now. Uh, 2A or 2B. Praise the Lord. Isaac Overflow 2B. Praise the Lord. Ima overflow. Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow. The last overflow. Where overflow four? Okay, no overflow. To be go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It'll have to be a very quick walk because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now please listen. Please except they want to talk to you prophetically don't worry listen just a touch is all that you need and i want you to believe by faith as soon as they touch you do what you couldn't do head back to your seat unfortunately because of the limited time we may not have time to take testimonies as you would have seen in many of my external ministrations for two reasons one this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people if we we'll pray and say if you are healed come out it will take a lot of time we don't have that luxury of time praise the lord so we are doing three things at the same time one we are praying for the sick has promised prom okay pastor alpha oh uh who is in overflow one only you two of you okay pastor alpha join them in overflow three pastor femi uh-huh he pastor femi should go to did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, Overflow 2. 2B. Okay, with, with Ima now. 2B or 4. You are in 2. Only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in Overflow 4. Overflow 4. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone. And then we'll try to tie it up tonight. But whilst you are sitting, make sure you connect by faith. You can involve your loved ones. Let them know that God is moving right now. He's blessing people. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let there be great miracles by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. If they are still praying for you, where, wherever, whatever, overflow, don't worry. Just, just hang on there. Please stretch your hands to this request as we pray. I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare. 
by the Spirit. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please lift your voice, everyone. Let's have all the requests here, please. If there are people who are yet to submit. I'd like you to stretch your hands to this request as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Shabratos kaparuze degete Rakata baranda skete balakoto shiata Embratos keparusha lakatos Rekete paruda shiata Lord turn impossible situations around In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus Release miracles Release solutions Break yokes oh God Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings. Reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. Shabarato Sedepa and Telekoto Shabra Shibrakatosh Capredis Shabaruta Sedekatabalash in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder, Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you. The God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests, a representation of their expectations, their pain, their disappointments, their anticipations. Lord, I decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two i declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the god of heaven we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow this request to be answered in the name of Jesus we call on the father of spirits to touch them on that wise and every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men we break that hardness now father answer speedily Lord, answer speedily. Amen. Turn situations around. Amen. Every death sentence represented in this request, we declare that death sentence is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, Father, we give you praise because we declare by faith, the very faith of the Son of God, that these requests are met in Jesus' name. Amen. As I stand upon these requests, I declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of Jesus that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus name and I prophesy over you by the God of heaven the Egyptians that you see today that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond I declare by the spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in Egypt, if you go out of Egypt, no going back. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three weeks, may the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare, it will not exceed three weeks. A 
and every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems i mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest i mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of jesus give jesus praise hallelujah i'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me, by the God of heaven, every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand here as the servant of the living God. I force that door to open now. Everyone trusting God for a job, a meaningful job, not a nonsense job that does not have honor. I pray now. A job that will not take your relationship away from God. A job that will not make you compromise. Receive that job in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. The kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season. I speak over you. Receive fresh fire. Access to revelation, access to light. Receive it in Jesus' name. Every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass, I command them to appear now. I preached last week on the book of remembrance. Let me pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, I open the book, both in the heavens and in the earth, and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth, I compel remembrance now. I compel remembrance now. Every kind of barrenness, biological barrenness, financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now number two Every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord. I cancel that pronouncement now. Listen, by the blood of the eternal covenant, in the name of Jesus, I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now. The kind of honor you have never seen in your life i speak to you by the spirit step into it let me pray for favor i will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like eli your eyes becoming dim i pray for you i fan back your vision to flames
in the name of Jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life I declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me I speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I speak to you by the God of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly And anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of Jesus by the God who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries Let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as God is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come 
represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not i stand in agreement with you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make jesus lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do join them quickly scripture says you must be born again if you're coming from outside please make it snappy make it as fast as possible hallelujah i salute every one of you here please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i ask you to be my lord my savior and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight and forever i move forward ever backward never these three ladies didn't pray the prayer somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer the prayer is already finished you this yellow girl and those two those my sisters or shall any of you are you not christians direct them someone pray the prayer with them in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now begin to walk in victory in jesus name i introduce you to the ministry of the holy spirit you will know him you will walk in his ways you will command strange results in your life in the name of jesus christ i call you tonight the righteousness of god i call you that you are part of the family of heaven in the name of jesus all of the people who are just coming you're welcome god bless you just join that group that they are praying with and just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray in the name of jesus christ lord jesus thank you for these precious ones that you died for I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and I declare that you reign in life go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you all of you in concert I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted everyone please follow her and um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you or praise the Lord hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain